everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm doing okay. Thank you. So, we didn't have a last week because I was in Nashville speaking at um, a NAB radio show event, but in the interim, the last week, well, especially our current topic is going to be within the last 24 hours. Um, SoundCloud and Spotify. Yeah. So there's been forever rumors about SoundCloud. Are they going out of business? Is somebody buying them? Clearly, clearly they've been in play in some form or or another for quite a while. Right. Um, yesterday yeah. the news just dropped that Spotify is in, how do they phrase it? Final, final dis- discussions, final negotiations. Meaning, um, it's not the first call made saying, "Hey, we're interested in this." This is sort of like that's happened months and months ago. Now they're yeah. just making sure the contract has all the right signatures and all the terms are agreed upon. Spotify is going to purchase SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah, big and you. Know- It's interesting because, you know, you and I have talked a lot about SoundCloud over the last year and SoundCloud was, you know, they were having some financial issues and then they launched their streaming service. They were under fire from a lot of people for having things on their site that maybe, you know, uh, weren't being monetized, weren't being cleared. And part of the way they got out of trouble was they launched a full-on streaming service, which you and I reviewed on this show. And it was a disaster, but they remained in business. Um, And it's just not the core business that you and I used SoundCloud for for so long. So SoundCloud continued to kind of limp along. And now comes this, this talk about Spotify buying them and if you look at it i think at a high level it it makes a lot of sense um i'm not sure if they're they would stop doing the old uh you know kind of soundcloud service that we all know and love if it's going to be just rolled into spotify my question is is this just a play for those um subscribers that they have Um, Whether they're freemium or paid, I think there's value in that. You know, Spotify is, you know, they've been on a tear. They've been growing pretty quickly, right? So here, you know, we don't even know really the price. There's been some rumors. I'm looking right now. There's there's been some rumors that it was valued at a billion dollars or valued at you know 700 million from uh, Financial Times. Um, Whatever that price is, I'm sure Spotify got a good deal and will increase their user count. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how how is this integrated. Taking, a, taking the subscription thing away for a second and just look at the core, what SoundCloud is good at, you know, how, how do you see that kind of uh, being rolled into yeah, Spotify? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, for, the, for most of our listeners, that's probably what they're concerned about is, what happens to all my SoundCloud files if it goes over to Spotify? Does SoundCloud, does SoundCloud continue to remain se- a separate website, a separate entity that's just owned by Spotify? Um, I would imagine for the short term, yes, but the long term goal is integration. It's got to um, be. Does Spotify want it for subscribe paid subscribers? Hard to say. My gut says no because nobody's ever made a point of how many paid subscribers SoundCloud has for their service. I imagine it's minuscule. Yeah. Minuscule because there's no promotion, there's no marketing, there's nothing there. Are they taking that streaming service out as a competitor? I don't think anybody gives a crap about SoundCloud's streaming service being a competitor they're not competing no. with anybody on the streaming side so i would imagine the soundcloud streaming service would just disappear and they would probably say oh if you're a paid subscriber here you go you've got three months free on spotify whatever yeah um all of the 
free SoundCloud accounts? Yeah, I don't know how many that is, but that's a 175 lot. 175 million from okay. the last report. Right, so that's a lot. 175 million free accounts that can all of a sudden be Spotify account holders. Right. Right. So um, Spotify is right around, I think, between 90 and 100 million um, free, freemium, you know, uh, ad supported accounts right now. And I think they're around 40 million paid. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you brought 175 million, uh, and, there's and there's going to be, be some, some overlap. There's some right? overlap, obviously, but. Not even if it's about not, half that. You know? I was going to say, no, I would guess not even a fifty percent overlap. Yeah. So let's um, say it's a hundred million. That's still, you know, they've just kind of doubled their base. And if they did it for, you know, seven hundred million to a billion dollars, you know, uh, that may be a steal for them. Now, now, ultimately, in the end, if it gets integrated, would SoundCloud? You know, the, the big issue has always been with SoundCloud is things are not licensed. People upload. It's like we've said it before. It's the audio equivalent of YouTube. People right. upload whatever they want. There's very little restrictions or control over what's being uploaded. That's what's upset mainly the record labels, the rights right. holders. So does that ability remain in Spotify, or does it completely disappear? Does Spotify does only want to does, you know, does Maybe do they do something like we're trying to get YouTube to do, and, you know, you monetize it, and, you know, let's face it, if there are things up there that aren't legit, and they have the fingerprinting software to find out pretty quickly what audio is where, they'll know if it's licensed, unlicensed, you know, user generated or just somebody, you know, giving away somebody else's files, of course they're going to shut that kind of thing down. But there's so many questions surrounding what do you do with all of those accounts, with all of that music? Um, it It's going to take a while. I can see them rolling it into uh, into Spotify. I can see a tab, you know, or some kind of thing where... Um, it kind of brings into play some of the, you know, user generated and legitimizes, you know, um, a lot of folks on SoundCloud, as you know, are DIY. A lot of them are unsigned. It might give them the opportunity to, you know, have their music on a huge platform like Spotify and Nobody else you, really has that. You know what? What there's there's there's, there's a ton of questions. I mean, you've got artists that will release their music through Spotify and Apple and everything else, but they also put the same album up on SoundCloud. When the services get merged, what happens? Do you all of a sudden it's like, well, no, you can't have the free streaming of your album, even though you're the rights holder. The free streaming because you uploaded it to SoundCloud because we're trying to monetize it in the streaming platform on Spotify. You follow where I'm going? It's like the same, the same album, the same release is up there now in the same platform. One of it's basically completely free, and the other one, we're trying to freemium get you into a premium. We're trying, you know. Do they nix one and say, "All right, they well, have we, to." You ha yeah, it has to disappear. It, yeah, um, I think so. I think it would have to go away. Or, or, or is is the ultimate end game here that? And 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 I worked with a company years ago that did this. Went out and basically bought a competitor. Um. Does Spotify only want the 175 million user accounts and everything else on SoundCloud gets shut down, gone, over? That means nothing to us. The, the, the ability of you to upload your own music isn't what we're interested in because we want you to come through our other avenue for uploading music. Um, we only want 175 million people to add on top of our business because this is what our core business is, streaming music. Yeah. 
And let's face it, the long-term goal of Spotify isn't freemium. Freemium is being limited more and more each time they renegotiate with the majors. Um, there, there are a lot of people who think it's going to be going away. So they have to be looking at more of an Apple model where you may get a free trial, but you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get a long-term freemium kind of period. I think that it makes a lot of sense for Spotify to integrate the user-generated content, all of that into their platform as opposed to kind of, you know, cutting that out. Um, and they, I think that would really build and differentiate them from the other services. And I also think that by doing that and also kind of cutting out any duplication, any redundancies, like if my account happened to have an album, you know, uh, that, that they already have on Spotify and they're already, you know, there's a deal in place and they're already... Uh, generating either ad revenue or subscription revenue from, I can see them either just identifying that in my account that's that's on the platform or just eliminating any of those kind of redundancies. Um, but I do think having a, a platform for you know DIY, user-generated, I think is a really smart play and something that nobody else is really doing uh, if know, they'll do it. I... I, I Believe me, I hope that DIY aspect of SoundCloud would remain. I, I hope it doesn't go away. I'm just saying it's it's a far-fetched business direction, business model, but it is feasible that Spotify might. We don't care about all that. They could. We, we don't care. Again, we only care about the customers. We're buying customers. That's it. We're buying customers because customers are what we need to beat Apple Music. We don't need yeah. a DIY back end because and to drive the stock price up and to drive if, the stock. Know, if they have a lot of more subscribers, a lot more subscribers. But do you think that how many of those would actually stay around if the user generated side was? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I can imagine they would take That's all not the, the primary use. They, they would take all those customers and they'd say, "Hey, we'll give you ninety days. We'll give you a year of free premium service." Um, and and I think we've talked about this in the past. Yes, even to take to to redeem your year of free premium, you do have to register. You do have to put a credit card in. You won't get charged for a year. And what they're hoping is, when a year comes up, you, you forget. For, you forgot. You subscribed, and you remain. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just it's just one one way this could play out. I I, I hope it doesn't go that way. But also keep in mind, right now, there's no way for anybody to upload music directly to Spotify. No, you have to go through an aggregator. You have to go through a yeah, an aggregator, a, digi a digital distributor. Yeah. So if they bring in that DIY backend, now all of a sudden, well, you do now have an ability to upload music directly into Spotify. What if and I link want to it? What and if I want to release it? my album? But I'll only do it through the DIY portion. Forget about going through the, the, the digital distributor. Does that impact potential business and relationships? Does I you know there's there's a lot of interesting questions here that that That's where I open think it's up. going. Yeah, I think that, that makes a lot of sense and that would be super exciting. Can you imagine if one of your artists that you're working with, let's say you have one that's unsigned and you wanna you want to get it up. You want to get it into Spotify's ecosystem. You want to see if you can get it into some playlists. You want to be able to promote it uh, through your socials. And all of that's positive for Spotify because you're driving more traffic to their platform. Well, but does, does somebody like um, the, the, the tune cores, the CD babies of the world, sit down with Spotify and go, we don't like that because now... Now all of these unsigned bands don't need our platform to get our music into Spotify. They don't have to pay us thirty dollars or take a percentage of the sales or whatever the 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 deals are that these various distributors have with artists. Now they can just go straight to Spotify and go, yeah, listen, I, all all I care, listen, you go to TuneCore and you can upload to I don't know how many dozens of different digital platforms out right. there. But at the end of the day, most people don't give a crap about 
eighty percent, ninety percent of those other platforms. You probably never heard of most of them. People want to get it up on Spotify and they want it on iTunes, Amazon. Right. That's it. Now all of a sudden you can go straight to Spotify. And you don't have to go through an aggregator. That changes. It does the the business I, model of of these companies that are out there building yeah. upon Spotify. Yeah, you make a good point. I mean, you're right. Those those three are probably you know seventy five plus percent of or even higher of the digital sales and streams that you know happen in the business. I do like those aggregators. I think there's some good people uh, that work there, and I do think they provide such a great service for people who don't know how to I, get I, their I, stuff I, up. Again, you, I'm right there with you. I agree. I think I think they there's a place for them. I'm just painting a scenario it that changes things it cha- you're right it changes things Absolutely. Now, now what happens if spotify does all of this and it succeeds and it's working does somebody like apple go well you know what maybe we need to open up our back end and amazon well maybe we need to open up our back all of a sudden all of these digital streaming services now give you the ability to upload your music directly to them yeah, I think it changes their business. I, I don't think their businesses go away. Even if in that worst case scenario, I see it as there's certain things that you need to do to get your music up on a service. For example, and you know all of this stuff, like you know, you need to encode um, the audio into a certain format. You need to provide the images in a certain size and resolution. You know, you need to supply the metadata in a certain uh, fashion and all of those things. And they vary by DSP. So one of the great things that say like a TuneCore can do is they know everybody's specs. They can have you supply things and they can help you to get those to everyone. When it, if it did get to a point where it was kind of the free for all that you just described, um, where you're uploading your music to each one of the services individually, or maybe just the top two or three, still there's going to be some expertise needed to make sure it's done properly. Because you and I have seen this in the past. We've seen CDs that are made that don't have metadata <laughs> attached yeah. to them. No, you're you know? right. You're right. So, you know, but that's if you want it done right. You know, but uh, I, I think it's a fascinating uh, turn of events. And I, I'm super excited to kind of see what it looks like, you know, when Pandora bought RDO, you know, I, I loved RDO and I was thinking, you know, this is going to be really interesting. You know, this whole kind of, you know, internet radio is now kind of merging with streaming. This is going to be exciting. And, you know, the launch is imminent and I'm super excited to see what they're going to do, you know, and I would never count out Amazon or Apple music. And then to a lesser degree, the, uh, the Google guys, um, I do believe that, especially with Amazon and Apple, you know, they have their own strengths and they're going to be watching this really closely to see, you know, how they may need to pivot. Well, so let, let's let throw a, another little what if into this. So a week before the Spotify SoundCloud stories hit, somebody at Spotify basically said, I could see Facebook buying us. Whoa. So Spotify buys SoundCloud. Something's going to happen with Spotify. We know that. Yeah. Most likely they will get acquired. They're not going to remain on yeah. their own. Um, Facebook buying Spotify, which then owns SoundCloud. You know, we've never, in all of our discussions, we've always talked about the, you know, the... The, the big three, the Amazon, the Apple, the Google. Facebook buys Spotify. It's big four instantly. Instantly. Now, because we've seen this repeatedly with Apple trying to add social networking to iTunes. Yeah. Failed. Failed with Ping. I'm sorry, I'll go on the record. It's failed with Connect. Um. The only platform that's really done a okay job is Spotify with social networking features. I mean, even when Apple Music first launched, you and I were talking about this, their their social sharing was broken. It didn't work. We were just like, how can you launch something 
that you haven't even tested what it looks like when you share it to Facebook. So now all of a sudden, it's not a music company trying to become a social network. It's a social, it's a social net, network. It's a social network yeah. that just bought a music company. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think there's only a handful of players that have, A, the capital to do it, and two, could benefit from doing it, right? Um, you look at that scenario that you described, I think is a realistic one. You, you, you and I have talked about this. It's been in the press a lot over the last year that – you know, Spotify is, you know, ripe for, you know, going public, number one, being acquired, number two. Um, but I wouldn't count out, you know, Google in, in, in this whole scenario as well. And to a lesser degree, even Amazon, although I think they're more like Apple in the sense that they probably want to create it in their own backyard. But I could, I could easily see Facebook, you know, they're a cash-rich company. Right? They could afford to, you know, buy Spotify. And to your point, the integration would be ridiculous and it would be intuitive. It would it, be it, it, see, it seems like it's the right way to do it. Instead of trying to take your your streaming store, for lack of a better term, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and figuring out how to add a social network to it and then get people to come to it as a new social network, Google Plus, failure. So it makes more sense that somebody who is the de facto established leader as a social network, Facebook, picks up the music piece. And and let's be honest, there's already pretty decent Spotify hooks within the Facebook world. I mean, mm -hmm. when, when you when you do an, a Spotify share into Facebook, it looks nice. It works well. Um, you know, it might be nothing more than, all right, artists, now you can instantly add your Spotify channel right to your Facebook page, and it's all right there. You don't need yeah. to leave Facebook to go to Spotify. Yeah, it's it all would be right there. an integration like we've never seen. Yeah, and and because even those e walls would be down, and and even the individual users on my my personal Facebook profile, I can now have a section that's all my Spotify playlists and everything else. So I feel like that seems like the easier, more logical way to integrate is bringing the music into the social network, rather than trying to build a social network, a new social network around. Yeah. Yeah, I think in this platform. scenario, um, Spotify needs Facebook more than Facebook needs Spotify. What if it were somebody that, like Google, another cash-rich company that you know I you know I never want to count them out. What if it was the same scenario, but Google bought um, Spotify and integrated to really bolster, you know. But but everything from search and Google Plus and some of that, yeah, it hasn't been the success that they wanted it to. But maybe something like this could help it. But uh, they, at at the core, Google does not have a social network that's the daily destination for the average right. person out there. Right. You know, we we've talked about this many times when we we'll get pitches from people who are like, we've got the best new music social network platform out there. We're going to have all the fans are going to come here, bands hang out. Great. You got a beautiful feature set. Now, how are you going to get all the fans who live every day on Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat to Twitter leave and, yeah. and come over to this brand new platform? How many billions of dollars in marketing and promotion are you going to? Oh, well, we're not. We're not investing any money in that. We And, yeah. and it's like, well, then you're not going to win. It does... The better platform does not win. The people people are lazy. They're not going to leave where they've been. A, you know, I've finally figured out my Facebook profile. It's taken me years. I'm comfortable. Don't make me go somewhere else. Yeah, it has to be really a, compelling. Yeah, and, you know, and, you and, don't and, create your own party. Go to where the party and, is. And even though Google is huge, massive resources, you name it. Um. They can't create, they just can't create a new social network and expect people to show up. Again, Google Plus is a perfect example. They tried to create that network and then integrate the entire Google sphere into it. It fell apart. They've pulled it yeah. apart. 
everything's being dismantled and taken away from Google+. Plus. So if they bought Spotify, that doesn't give them a social network. It just gives them streaming customers. Yeah. That's it. And 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 I think that's not the end goal here is it's not just acquiring more customers, but it's getting people to live in your website. You don't want people to leave. Yeah. If 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 Facebook owns a streaming service and let's just say they buy somebody else, anybody, that streaming service will pretty much instantly rocket to the top as the most used service. Why? Because people just live in Facebook. Yeah. I don't need to go somewhere else. I don't need to launch another app. I don't need to go to another website. I don't need another login. It's just there. Great. Yeah. I'm lazy. That is, you know, that's sort of the Apple model of well, we've got all these credit card numbers. People don't need to go register to spend money somewhere else. Well, true. But right now, people only go to Apple to do something and then leave. You don't go to Apple Music and stay there. You go no. to you go to Facebook, and you stay there for a longer period of time because you're checking out photos, you're reading some videos, you're listening to some music, yeah. you're posting some news, and but and we all everybody knows this. Before long, you're looking at your watch, going, "Jesus, what a time suck that was," and that's exactly what. The websites yeah. want. They want the, there's a stat, the average time spent on site. Mm -hmm. They want that number to be huge. You want people to not leave your site. If you're on a website for 30 seconds, you're not winning. If you're on a website for 30 minutes, that's, that's great. huge. great. That's huge yeah. because that website has 30 minutes of opportunity to sell you something. Yeah, the advertising that they get is so much better. I mean, that's why Pinterest is still around. I mean, you get on there and it's a time suck. It's you know? yeah, link to link to link. So exactly. So, so yeah, Google could buy Spotify, but I don't think it's got the same outcome as if Facebook bought it because I don't yeah. see Google as a social network. Yeah. Google's a company that owns a lot of businesses. Some of them work well together. Some of them are completely separate from each other. But there isn't a central... It's not like you go to Google.com and hang out at Google.com. No, and they wanted you to, you know, with uh, you know, the whole Google Plus and, and all of those different services, Google Hangouts and some of those. And look, they've got, you know, millions of users, just not hundreds of millions of users like maybe they would have hoped they have some good services they do some things extremely well and what i love about google is they're not afraid to try new things you know um when i remember when google docs first started people said well no, no one's ever going to use that and a lot of people use that every day you know the self-driving car you know maybe google glass wasn't you know uh, a home run hit but i love the fact that they're they're trying different things. Yeah. But you're but you're right. I think it makes a lot more sense, you know, for Facebook. I do believe a lot of the stuff is cyclical. Um, I think a lot of people are surprised that Facebook is still the big dog on campus this many years in. Um, but you know, things evolve, things change. There's always, you know, new players and consolidation. You, but you know, you know what why I th part of me feels like <clears throat> Facebook is still here is because they're not a one trick pony. And to some extent, that's also what makes them, makes people hate them because there's so much in, it's, Facebook is sort of like Photoshop. There's so many freaking features. I don't know which ones I'm using and do I need this and how does that work? But at the same time, you keep going back to it because it's everything. Yeah. You know, Instagram, one trick pony, images, video, but basically images, um, you know, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube. I mean, you we we I haven't seen it yet, but YouTube is launching a full social network in YouTube now. They're going to add the ability to post other things, share other things. Um, that might be okay. You I, know, I'm, people I'm actually, do hang out. I'm in actually YouTube excited for a while. about that. I'm really excited about seeing what that is because so YouTube is a social network, but right now it's been a social network about one thing: post your video, and that's it. And there's comments. Now now they're trying to give you reasons to stay on the site and I like the do idea. more. I yeah. love the idea. Yeah. But, you know, Facebook has never been 
about one trick. No, and they evolve. I mean, look at Facebook keep, Live. Yeah, they keep that, adding. It's a, the, it's a and, home run. They bought um, Instagram, right? Well, I yeah, mean, they, you know, and, and Facebook is clearly an example of they don't care about the not invented here. Mm -mm. You know, Apple has always been about, well, if it's not invented here, we don't do it. It doesn't exist for the most part. Facebook, you know, they'll they'll steal the ideas right from somebody else. And because of their sheer size and ability to roll it out. And you, wallet. Yeah. You know, listen, you know, um, streaming video over social networks. There was a little little app called Meerkat. I don't even know if it's still around. Then Twitter had their thing called Periscope. Right. All of a sudden, Facebook Live rolls out, and those other things do not matter. Does not matter. Well, there's, it's hard to compete with that kind of a mass audience. That I mean, I think those audience, other platforms yep. are still around and people are still using them. But Facebook, to your point earlier, you're on Facebook. You're already there. You're, you're hanging out there. You're checking stuff. You're spending a lot of time there, whether it's, you know – communicating chatting with somebody whether it's you know watching a video whether it's looking at images there's so many different things and events there to kind of keep your attention they just have a, a ridiculous footprint it's that, hard that, to compete that, with that, that. that that's exactly it so they don't need to worry about being third to the party they're the biggest one i mean yeah. you know the second facebook video rolls out you're right periscope is still there and it's still active on twitter but it's became secondary. It's like, if you want people to see stuff, you're doing Facebook video. Yeah. Um, so it could be extremely interesting if yeah. Facebook bought Spotify, which owns SoundCloud. Does that then all of a sudden, because let's be honest, SoundCloud never was deeply and well integrated into Facebook. No. No, um, I mean. So all of a sudden, does that give Facebook? SoundCloud a brand new lease on life because now it's a DIY audio platform that's in a social network that's all about you doing whatever you want and sharing whatever you want. Sure. Does it, does that give SoundCloud the life it really needs now? And there's always that option. I mean, they could do what Pandora did with RDO or ap appears what they're going to do and that's they take the technology you know, they take the subscriber base and they roll it into their own business and roll out uh, a service. And, you know, the SoundCloud, we don't even know if SoundCloud as an entity will remain uh, if it gets sold to someone. And they could just take the subscriber base, roll it in and integrate it into their own business. But I think the smart play would be to keep it as a separate brand and entity within the new business. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it will be interesting to see how all this rolls out. Um, I'm actually eager. I think we need something like this to happen. Yeah. We, we need something to happen with SoundCloud. We need something to happen with a major streaming service, a la Spotify. You know, right now we're every you know everybody's trying to be a streaming service. We, we were chatting how iHeartRadio is going to announce their own streaming service, and we've talked about Amazon. At the end of the right. day, you know, and, and, and Bob Le Lefsetz, who we love reading, has, has made this point many times. You only need one. You only need one store for this on the Internet. You only need one place for this. You don't need six different streaming services with the same 30 million catalog. Yeah. And a few different bells and whistles of what you can do with that catalog. We got to have some consolidation some shrinking yeah. some yeah it's it's mergers and acquisitions um and 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 i hope spotify stays at the forefront because they've been kicking butt lately yeah they, they've done a really good job of innovating and you know i think we both know that eventually you know sometime in the near future there's going to be either an IPO or a sale uh, in, I don't know which order, um, but but it is evolving, it is changing, it's very dynamic, it's consolidating, and I think we're going to see more and more consolidation to your point about, you know, do we need 12 of these music streaming services? No. Um, I can see uh, a few 
uh, competing on marketing and convenience and usability and uh, you know, areas like that, I can see that. I don't see it breaking down as some people do. Oh, well, there's a, a music streaming service for genres or there's a music streaming service that just caters to a certain group. I don't think that's a long-term plan that where you'll succeed because there's very little, there's very little revenue um, profit in streaming. They're just, I mean, that's why these companies that aren't backed by a major, you know, like a, a Google, Apple, Amazon, you know, whatever, that's why, you know, they're they're hemorrhaging cash, a lot of these, because first of all, the rights holders take a big chunk, and secondly, it's not cheap to run one of these and hire the employees and have the office space and do all of those things. So I think a lot of people want to get into this business, but then realize pretty quickly it's you're not going to get rich doing it. No, you're right, and you're going to go. You're going to pull your hair out doing it. Um, you know, if you came in as a tech person, you're getting an exposure to the music industry, which you never could have imagined what it was going to be like. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, and 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 right now, I don't see a whole lot happening between these major streaming services that's differentiating them. You know, I I think, in my opinion, Spotify, and we've talked about Spotify's playlist. I think Spotify is is inching inching ahead in their playlists and how smart they are. But there's not a lot that's like, oh my God, I got to use this service because it does this. Yeah. And and they're trying. I I feel like that's what Apple's trying to sell. There isn't a wow factor yet for any of these guys. Basically, yeah. you're all still just a catalog of 30 million songs and click play. Yeah, I mean, Tidal came out and said, well, you know, ours is going to sound better and, you know, we're have a higher bit rate and we're going to have some exclusives. And really, honestly, I, I know people don't like hearing this, but people don't, they don't care about the quality as much as they, they should. We listen to AM radio. We listen to FM radio that was kind of noisy. Um, people use this kind of music, you know, in their car, at the gym, when they're walking the dog, those kinds of things. And as much as I would love people to care about a higher bit rate, I, I don't believe they do. Um, I think that the differentiator is really going to be those who do some of these things, like they make the curation um, intuitive and they do the best job of marketing it. Because you're right, it's the same 30, 40 million tracks, but that's too much. You and I can't dig through that volume of songs. So, you know, I think they're starting down that path. It's in its infancy right now. But, you know, Spotify has done some really great things with, you know, their discovery, uh, you know, playlists and new release radar, you know. And and I, I, I do love some of the things that, you know, I think Apple's done some pretty cool playlist things, but I don't think anybody's really found that sil silver bullet yet. No, no, there there isn't, and and that that's why I think there's gonna there has to be some consolidation because right now there's just too many people essentially doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, Apple's got their playlist, Spotify's got their playlist, different names. One's updated on Monday, one's updated on Wednesday. Big deal. Yeah. It doesn't matter if, if, if I'm a user of one, I'm not missing out anything because I'm not listening on the other one. Yeah, and exclusives are being reduced after this, you know, whole big fiasco that that just went down. A lot of the majors are saying, Look, I've had enough of these exclusives. You know, but I was looking at the free numbers and I think this is one of the big things that, that needs to be addressed besides the whole YouTube thing, but that's for another discussion. But I was looking at the number of free users on streaming services and, and you know we mentioned SoundCloud with 175 million but Spotify would like you know n between 90 and 100 million free users like ad supported basically and that's there's very little revenue there uh, and Pandora with you know 80 million there are tons of people that you know in order for sub subscription streaming to really be successful is people have to pay the monthly fee um, and I think that there's the big kind of next step is how are these streaming services going to be so compelling that they make somebody who's 
you know, a casual listener, maybe in the background at work who doesn't mind the commercials and can't skip the songs, you know, how do they convert those people into people who will pay, you know, 10 bucks a month? And let's face it, 10 bucks a month <laughs> to have access not only to 30, 40 million tracks, but to have access to curation. Oh, my gosh, that that's a steal of a of a value, in my humble opinion. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. You're right. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, yeah. Cool stuff. We'll be watching this one closely. Yes, we will. So um, that's it. I don't know if we've got a special guest next week. I think we do. Yes, I think we do for the next couple weeks. A couple weeks. We've got a couple more lined up. So, all right. Yeah, so, so come back. Tune in. Tune in. That's it, everybody. Until next week, Music Biz Weekly Podcast. We're out.